Hello, hello everybody. We are getting ready. Welcome to my studio. I hope you're going to have a great uh, creative time. This is the moment when you can give your friends a shout on Facebook or on Instagram. Yeah. So let's hope everything works okay. Can you confirm you can hear me and you can see me? Because I think everything works on my side. Hello, everybody. Perfect. Awesome. Okay, just checking if my Connection is fine. Okay. Okay. So <clears throat> it's time to say my hellos. Ooh. Hello, everybody. How are you? Welcome to my studio. And today, as I promised, we are going to make a something fun in the junk journal and this I think is going to be very very good at a moment to talk about junk journaling in general and what is the difference between usual art journaling and junk journaling. I would love to hear your opinions on that as well. So <clears throat> the plan is we are going to work inside of my personal junk journal and we are going to include some of the new products. I have my uh, butterfly effect uh, papers. I've got tons of vintage papers and fabric and findings and um, also some images. And of course the new stencils. I'm still thinking how it's going to be possible to include the waxes because this is not the usual product I use in my journals, but maybe we'll find a way. The stencils. And of course, I hope uh, it's going to be a bit of creative fun. I have to uh, say at the very beginning, I don't really journal in a technical way, which means, like, no, my art journaling is not focused on the technical side of it. And so, of course, there are some techniques I include, but my main point in making a journal page is to work with my emotions, my memories, my um, current mood. So most of the times the pages may not be very advanced when it comes to techniques. Um, so <laughs> that is four new stencils. Somebody was asking how many of the new ones uh, we have. So in in the way my journals, they are more like storytelling pages instead of like uh, trying all the new techniques in, uh, in on, on the page. I do try the things, but on the other hand, the main purpose of my journaling is to tell a story or to process some kind of emotions or just to relax. And that is the way I do it. So if um if you were uh, looking for like very uh technical like you know always a new technique kind of journal pages this is probably not my way uh, but it's fun 
It's a great way to reuse all of the scraps we have at home. It's a great uh, project to include a lot of personal elements, including real physical objects. And it is also fun to try uh, the, new, uh, the new products, because uh, why not? My plan is to uh, work on the double spread. I usually make double spreads because it just makes sense for me. I have more space to play. And um, I will be able to talk a little bit about the um, new products and uh, I will be able to talk about journaling in general. So I hope it is fun. The only problem is uh, usually in my junk journal, I include a little bit of the, uh, you know, stitching or sewing. So if I will leave you for a minute to do some stitching on my old machine you just need to forgive me because i really think uh, adding a bit of that uh, makes the pages more fun this is i what i really enjoy to do so uh, first of all i would love to uh, ask you for subscribing sharing this video with your friends uh dziękuję bardzo bardzo mi miło <laughs> Uh, you can share it on Facebook, you can share it in the Finnevar and Friends Open Studio group, you can share it in the Patron group, if you're one of the patrons. Uh, so some of the people who didn't see the announcement, they can join us at the very beginning. And I hope you will enjoy it. I really like uh, these informal sessions when we just chat and create. Most of the times, this creative guttering ones we do uh, with my patrons, but I was thinking it's a nice... Uh, the idea to spend some more time with all the people who love journaling and mixed media and to uh, make it an open invitation date for everybody. So <clears throat> hello to all the people joining. I can see we've got 50 people watching already, which is great. I can see some of my lovely patrons. Thank you so much for being here and supporting us. And um, I can see people from United States, Sweden, Poland, uh, Peru. I was always sure I've seen, okay, Irish fraction is here as well. I've seen ladies from the UK. So we have very international group and I hope uh, you're going to have a great time. If you have a moment and you would like to create together with us, uh, please do. It's uh, always nicer to share the creative moment with other people, I guess. I also invite you to chat and to ask questions. And if you <laughs> have any question and, and I can't really see it because I'm focused and I don't repeat, uh, so yeah, I don't answer the question, sorry. You should repeat and if it's possible, make it in bold so I can see it. Because sometimes when I look at the screen, I may not see your question if the chat is very active. And maybe that will be really um, not a problem to answer your question right away. Okay? So if somebody is misbehaving, please tell them to stop. I hope everybody is going to be super nice and we're going to have a lovely session. So I think we are ready to start. I've got my brushes, clean water. I've got some of the papers, I've got tons of different stuff. So I'm going to show you some of the examples of the pages I did in the past. And um, a lot of these uh, pages, they are a combination of the found objects, papers and texture. So I hope it will be inspiring to see. Let's have a look. Mm -hmm. So this is my messy table. I'll try to put the camera in the best possible position. <laughs> Die cutting, yeah, perfect idea to use that time. So as you can see, I added a bit of stitching out on the outside of my pages here already. And we may have a look at the other pages I made. So 
So this is the very beginning of my junk journal. This is one of the <laughs> many journals I've got. There is an envelope that may be useful for some um, found elements and objects. And as you can see, there is quite a lot of the dimension. And I made this journal thinking about uh, dimensional pages. So there is a lot of space in between and there will be no problem if it gets bulky. I use an old book cover as a um, base. And then I put my signatures inside using the tape. I, it's really straightforward, very simple construction. And I plan to work in this journal using my family photos. So it's going to be a bit of like a tribute to my family and uh, the great times, especially the summertime we had before. So as you can see, my journal pages are rather on the messy side. And uh, what I really like to do is to include fabric, include stitching, include some found objects. Like in here, we've got this page that has a little bit of a flap. And then there are some objects that I like to add, like pins, uh, some rusty elements. So it is rather fun. There is also a, a, a double page that I was showing just uh, before as a video. This is the one I made to showcase the new uh, stencil. And um, it also has a bit of dimension and a nice uh, texture. So that is going to be a perfect example. If you didn't see the uh, making of that page, I just posted that video on my YouTube channel this week. Hello again. Hello, everybody. I'm very happy you are here. We're starting in a moment. I just give people the chance to join. Hello, Lucille. Dzień dobry, Ivona. Hello, hello. So we've got a lot of empty pages here. It's just the very beginning of the journal. But I want to show you some of the pages which I made in the past. And that was a kind of a junk journal as well. And these pages, they are rather small and they are done inside of a book, but they uh, have all the possible signs of my junk journaling. So there is a lot of junk and there are some techniques used, but at the same time, uh, there is a bit of uh, messy feeling to it. So uh, that is for sure the style of the journaling that I do when it comes to uh, working with uh, family photos with dimension. So it is my way of junk journaling. And you can see there are some metal elements as well. This is inside of a book. So of course the book turned into <laughs> rather messy object. These pages are quite old, but I really had the best time uh, making them. So there's a lot of found objects. My plan when I was making this journal, it was to always include a piece of real junk. So here we've got a screw, ha screw. we have got some kind of huh, thingy. <laughs> then we've got a metal ring and even parts taken from the top. So there are things going on here. And I was not really worried about uh, the, tech, the book being damaged or anything. I really enjoyed the process. And there is a lot of paper and uh, quite a lot of the metal elements. Here is a little bit more organized version, but still we have the metal elements included. So let me show you some other pages. This is not very dimensional, but this one has the real coin in it and some uh, old buttons and lace. This one has the little uh, medallion you get for the Hoi communion and then another coin. In fact, this is the photo of the first communion. So that was the idea to use it. There's nice stenciling in the background. I used, uh, I used modeling paste. And then again, a lot of laces. There's even 
um, the hairpin <laughs> and then this one very colorful for me and including a real button so you can see in my junk journaling there's quite a lot of real objects and I do love using metal elements. I like using found objects, but also I love using the lace and fabric. So there's always a combination of these. So um, this is like a super old video as well. I made it oh, many, many years ago. So we are going to work in a similar style. Just to show you another example of the journaling this is mini junk journal uh that i have in this uh, book i got when traveling and this is more flat yet the same concept we are looking at the dimensional pages with the real elements here the dried pressed flowers then there is a tea bag together with some uh, resistance object, I don't know what's the name in English, resistor, a bit of the photo. Oh. And then a thread, and then a bit of seconds. So, you know, there is no good or bad way. Sorry, I had to move my tripod away from the table because the table was moving and the tripod was moving. Here we've got, again, family photo. This book, this book is from Japan. I got it on the Japanese uh, flea market. Here is the real st post stamp. So it, you, you know, it doesn't have to be super dimensional, but still there are real objects included. The fish, <laughs> these are rabbons. So any size is possible. Now, let's have a look and check what kind of uh, project I can do on my pages. I've got some space here and I already measured. If I work in my journal and I include stitching and I include a lot of layers, quite often I don't work directly in the book. I work on the pages and then I put them in. It's just easier for me this way. So I measure first how much space I've got. This is exactly what I did with this uh, pages here. I first cut the paper and then um, I made sure it was fitting on the pages. And then I was working outside of the book until it was ready. So I've got this step done already. So it's going to be nicer, I guess. And now we can think about putting some nice layers together. So if you would like to include um, things like um, layers and um, <laughs> stenciling into your project, you have to decide how many layers you're going to have. Because if you are going to do the stenciling in the bottom layer and then build on the top of that, um, well, <laughs> um, you may not see your stenciling anymore. So maybe it's a good idea to plan some of the layers and then put the stenciling in that part that is going to be really visible. So let's have a look at the different things I've got here. I've got some of the Prima decoupage paper, which is more like fabric. And I think we're going to include a bit of that as well. So I'm going to take that. I'm going to take a bit of the 
resist canvas, which you can turn into any color you like. So this is one of the older products from my collection, very old in fact, but we still have it in stock. So if you like using fabric, this is really cool because it's printed white on white. So once you add color, the pattern is more visible. Then some old papers and the photo. So let's start with picking the photo I can use today. I've got kind of gray background. And these photos are quite large. I like this one with the horse. Let's take the one with the horse. I never really used it for a project before, so it's high time. I'm going to cut it and then I can include that as a one of the important parts of my composition. So because the photo is big, I have to figure out the composition this way. So I will be able to see some of the other layers as well. So I usually print my photos on uh, photo paper, so I can use them for multiple techniques. Oops, not really perfect, but I will do my best. Okay, looks cool. Ah, it's in clearance on the Prima retail site, yay. <laughs> That's very good news. So now if I would like to include the photo, there are two ways. I can stitch it to some paper and, or I can add a bit of extra layers. What I think I'm going to do, I will add a backdrop of the fabric under. As you can see, it's nice to rip. And then we are going to include that as a part which one is the one i wanted to use this one that would be cool i can even do a bit of extra stitching around it <laughs> so i usually try to plan my layers well this is hard way to rip so let's just cut it yeah fabric usually likes to rip only one way Let's give it a little bit of the hard time so it's not going to be so stiff. So this is my image. I'm going to combine it with a bit of the fabric. Then... Mm -hmm. Probably it would be a good idea to include a bit of this as well. I quite like the part with the text. So I'll try to cut it smaller. It doesn't have to be even. It doesn't have to be straight. It's all about layers and making that a fun experience. In fact, I would prefer it bigger. I will use the other part someplace else. Hmm. OK, 
okay that looks promising so then I'm going to glue it just in the middle so I can add extras like in the pocket so I'm going to use some kind of glue for example 3d gel oh I'm so sorry Dorothy It seems, you know, it looks okay on my side, but you never know. Sometimes uh, um, the connection is very moody. So what I do in this case, <laughs> because I don't know how many layers I would like to really build, I give myself a chance to slide something on, you know, under. And if I plan the composition on one side, I will tr I can repeat similar things on the other side as well. So I like the text, so maybe I can use it on the other side instead. In the meantime, when I'm trying to find the fun elements to include, I would love to know do you uh, like art journaling and junk journaling? And do you have any special style you prefer in making these? Because there is a bit of a <clears throat> difference between like the flat pages and dimensional pages. And I think not everybody... Um, <sighs> does all of it like I do a lot of different things because I am getting bored very quickly but I can understand that you may have your preferred style and I would love to know what kind of journal pages you prefer and is it something like here with a lot of details and a lot of the fun elements or is it more flat with the techniques and painting and uh, stenciling because, you know, I'm kind of curious. So this way I'm going to have some kind of a balance. I will have a composition here and here. Let's look for some more fun layers. So what can I add? Let's have a look in my stash. I've got this lovely paper with the perforation that I absolutely love to use. I've got these vintage cards from the library. Ooh. So that will be papers. Journaling elements. Old plaster? No, it's not plaster, egg. Uh, Band aid. some of these elements and see what is going to happen. Uh, Leah said, I love grungy journals, personal style. What is the main difference between junk and art journals? 
Okay, that's a very good thing to ask. We are going to discuss that in a moment, I think. I love art journaling. I have never really done the, the true junk journaling. I guess I feel like they are kind of overlap though. I uh, love tons of texture. I think they absolutely uh, overlap. And it the biggest difference, in my opinion, is in techniques you use. And for me, junk journals are... <laughs> They are the journals that contain more of the found objects, more like, you know, the old scrapbooks and found objects and more of the dimension. So there's really this junk factor. They are made out of the leftovers. They're made all out of um, elements that are uh, probably just like found somewhere instead of um, more like um, flat painted techniques so if they contain um, for example um, pages from the old books or some tags or um, things such as old lace or you know uh, <laughs> tags from your uh, shopping or some kind of, you know, found pieces of metal, like in my case, they're going to be more of the junk journal style, I think. And when it comes to more flat techniques, well, for example, something like this, or like this, like this, that would be more of the, the art journaling when you focus more less on collecting and using the found objects and more on painting, writing, uh, drawing, adding um, your, you know, more like the, the artistic techniques. That would be my thinking. But I would love to know your opinion on that as well. So when what I do now, in my opinion, is much more of a junk journal than a traditional art journal. But anyway, both of them are form of journaling, right? So this is just how it works for me. I will just stick it per, you know, for a moment in here. So it's not moving all the way around so I can include more of the fun elements. You know, I, I'm being silly now. I wanted to add something else. I'm not sticking that yet. Sorry, I wanted to do stenciling. Ugh. I'm going to add more without sticking to a page. I don't do junk journaling, but I find it very fascinating how the creative mind puts it all together. Together, I would like to make something that holds my photos of the uh, the furniture I have redone. Oh, that sounds like a great plan for a project. I'm just going to make some of the, more of the layers. I just now try to create some kind of fun edge that is going to work as a nice backdrop for the photo. Because it's all moving, I struggle a little bit, but because I want to stitch it together, I kind of like just add layer by layer and not sticking that permanently. Yeah. 
One, uh, one is made with junk literally that you collect and make your books with. Arjun Nick is what Anna is doing. Yeah. I would love to slide some more elements in there. I've got this and I don't use it enough, so maybe it's a good idea to include that. This is like an old embellishment from Tim Holtz film strip. Yes, absolutely. I would love to see the junk journals made by Chrissy, uh, Chrissy as well. I'm trying to make it in balance. Like I'm going to include them on one side of the photo and clean out the ah, excess. And then let's have a look. If I do it here, then maybe I should add a little bit on this side as well. I have to finally stitch it together before it's going to drive me nuts, of course. That's also an important factor. That looks okay. I can always add more and more on the top. So that goes into possible sewing. And then how about a bit of the fabric tape? There is something about fabric tape that I absolutely love. So looks like I'm going to add a bit of these loops that I like so much. I love working with my family photos because this is my way of getting in touch with my family. And this is because I don't live nearby. We are in fact alone here in Ireland. Nobody else from my family is here. So when I work with my old family photos, it gives me that connection and brings back the memories of the times together. And it is also a great way for me to process emotions that I've got. Sometimes they are not really easy ones to process. So that absolutely makes sense that um, I would put a lot of emotion in my pages. And sometimes I make them and I cry. Sometimes I make them and I laugh. And sometimes I just look at the photo like this one and I think, yeah, my dad was a cool guy, I guess. And he, when he was uh, in his late teens, as far as I can see here. And apparently that was a very patient horse. That is the photo that was taken during his summer vacation. And I really think this horse should get like a special prize for, you know, agreeing to this kind of... Uh, tricks I, I don't think that is something enjoyable <laughs> i'm getting more of this fabric to add on that side it's probably not going to stick though it's supposed to be adhesive but it's so old that i don't think it's going to stick i have to help with a bit of gel A bit of layers. I enjoy making these clusters and layers. They just make me happy. It is like, you know, putting the whole thing together that way is just enjoyable. So 
I will take that and stitch it. But before, I would like to add a bit of stenciling. And to make it quite visible, I think I'm going to use the big and bold pattern. <laughs> Tape is very cool. So what I would like to do, if my photo is going to be here, I've got space over and below here to add some textures. And because I want them to be visible, I'm going to use white uh, medium. I'm going to use uh, modeling paste. And this way, um, it's going to stay white even after painting. I've been trying to combine different things. I love construction of mini albums with uh, tag spots and so on. I love to bring that together with art journal and junk journal elements. Yay! The junk journals are uh, definitely more about collecting things with pockets and uh, tag spots and pages that flip. And my art journals are more flat and maybe technique focused. Mm. Collecting things, I absolutely understand. And I love collecting things as well. I'm not great um, when it comes to making too complicated constructions, I guess. Is there any modeling paste here? There is. So this is going to be white after drying and flexible. <laughs> I think really uh, for me the junk journal thing is in that should include some junk <laughs> that is like the keyword for me in that and that means all the collecting the stuff that makes you happy makes a lot of sense like it's absolutely what i enjoy doing however um i'm not sure about the pockets <laughs> I don't really, I'm not great at the, you know, making pockets and so on. I'm just much better at sticking them together. And this is my way of doing it. But I absolutely love these uh, complicated and um, multi-layered um, pages people do. You know, it's usually this way if you can't really... Um, do something by yourself. Uh, it is just lovely when you can uh, admire the other people's work. So this is going to be white pattern. So when I'm going to have uh, a bit of color getting in there, it's going to look just perfect. This is one of the new stencils, the Manor House, which is bold and very clearly visible. And it should work even on the larger projects, because the e the design is uh, quite chunky. So you can use texture paste, crackle paste. You can use um, sand paste without any problem. But also, if you're working on a bigger collage, this is going to be your good friend because the design will be visible enough. So I'm just trying to make a balancing composition on the other side of the spread. It's also going to be white, so I can go over certain parts if I want to. That's going to be so cool! And now, quick break for cleaning the stencil. And I put that on my stove to dry. You can use the heat gun as well. And I am going to stitch my photo together with the other layers, so this is not going to drive me nuts. I can, I love the conversation you are having on how do how is what is your way to journal and how the junk journals work because this is something that I absolutely love to see. I love people discussing the art and. Um, it's very important that we talk about 
what is exciting for us and how do we uh, work on our projects, what is inspirational and so on. I, these are the most important matters in art. So this goes with me and that goes straight to the sink. So this is what happened. I added the stitching through the photo. I didn't do it here because I didn't want to stitch through the horse's face. So it goes like that. So I can now add a little bit more on the top if I want to. And of course I can stick it in the desired place. I didn't put it into drying, silly me. Well, it would be nice if I followed my own ideas. So I'm just going to cut off these unwanted parts. Oh, that looks cool already. Nice. So drying a little bit with the heat gun instead. And that will be the time when we can uh, use for answering questions and planning ahead. Surely I will need some paper clips. There has to be container with the paper clips somewhere. Yeah, I have buttons, so that's a good start. As you can see, when the modeling paste goes dry, it turns matte. And this is very smooth and easy to apply product and because it stays white and flexible you can use it on the fabric and it's going to give you beautiful results so it's really really fun to use especially on the pattern paper when you would like to see that the design the details of the design a little bit more so here we will have that effect visible that's a blob Simple and very fun. Now I keep looking for the paper clips. Not the fancy ones, just like, a, you know. Ah, here they are.
Not fancy paper clips, just rusty. So, if this one is going to go here, I still have a bit of space I can use. Woohoo! And then on the other side would be nice to have some balancing composition. Let me look at what we've got in uh, here and what kind of objects I can include. You know, junk journaling, I think, is all about freedom and trying to express your creativity in the dimensional kind of grungy way so if this is something that calls your name you may enjoy it i love doing that because i like being surrounded by the old things like old objects and that means i can use all of my papers all of my found lace pieces and uh, scraps of fabric and uh, thinner pieces of metal uh, buttons all of that together that makes sense so in a way i would say this really works for me i found this which i think is lovely this is handmade lace so huh, beautiful then we have some cool details a bit of clasps yeah here's a space for a bit of these larger elements i've got i've got um like mix of different things in that box <gasps> there is um um nail for the horseshoes so that will be perfect if i can include this one another paper clip some of the pins very old needle hmm piece of paper more of junk hmm tempting very I, I think I made multiple boxes with junk just for finding things again and again It will be just the joy of discovering things again. <laughs> okay, I have a bit of space above the photo, so it will be nice to... Oh, so pretty. No. Hmm. A bit of a doily. That doily looks okay. And I could do a similar thing on the other size, side. Yes, of course, Chris, it's okay to post later. I'm sure I'm not sure how it's going to work. You want to post it here? I'm not sure how. Uh, some of the um, I'm not sure if the links are going to work. The stencil is gorgeous. Thank you. I think it's very versatile. So we can include that into different kinds of the projects so they're going to, it's going to work as a more um, grungy if you're going to use texture paste or more smooth and beautiful when it comes to uh, something more flat 
and it is classical design really classical design so i would say it's a, it's a nice choice for a lot of projects i'm just looking for fun details i can include and i'm building the layers they're going to just be picking a bit on the top and on the bottom so it looks like it is maybe like an old vintage tablecloth together with the stencil if that makes sense Yes, Facebook group, uh, Finnover and Friends Open Studio, absolutely, you should. That is the best place to uh, show, show, show your um, projects and junk journals are absolutely the right place, uh, the right thing to go in that place. A little bit more up. As you can see, I'm, not, I, I'm able to touch the modeling paste already and it is not going to make any problem at all so it's dry enough to be touched what kind of fun found object except papers we can include in here i'm trying to position this so everything is visible this you know, I think this uh, nail, <laughs> this horseshoe nail was very promising. I just lost it already. Ah. <laughs> well, maybe I will find it in a moment. What? Ah, here it is. That would be nice we can find a place to put it in I really like this piece of but it feels like it's going to be too heavy on that side maybe I can include it on the other side and I have an idea oh that looks so good in here I'm going to stitch it uh, somehow i'm not sure how <laughs> i'm going to add some tape first oh, for some reason my Live stream decided to stop. Nobody knows why. Can you just confirm it is still working? Because I'm not sure. Okay, so it's just me. My, um, my, re my, other screen just decided to die. I have to refresh, I guess. For some reason. Yeah, I had to refresh. <laughs> Modern technology is not always on our side. I like adding fabric because it's going to absorb the color in a different way than just usual uh, paper. So this is going to be fun part. And then there are different colors included as well. I just love this cluster. So, <laughs> and now this is going to go here somehow. How can I attach it in a smart way? It's not going to work like that, but I will try to come with the stitching and stitch it a little bit on the top.
and down. I'm going to take small part of this and include somewhere here. So the modeling paste is going to resist in a pretty way, which is great. Now I can attach this photo in the right position. So either I can stitch it again or I can use the stapler. That's a good tool for this kind of work. No mercy. So everything stays in place for now. And on this side, maybe this will be just enough without extra stitching. Don't judge me, it's just kind of a solution. So now decorating. Adding more of the old paper here and there, just for the nice balance. I love this old paper. This is just like such a simple thing to do. But look. Oh, come on, stick. Ah, my studio is small and referrals for hand held or small sewing machine. This is the question for you guys. I am absolutely not the right person to ask that question because my machine is huge, old, absolutely you can't hold it in any hand because it's super heavy. And it is also a keepsake because it was my mom's. <laughs> so it would be great if you could give some advice on what kind of machine you could buy uh, for this kind of purpose. Now, do you glue that in your book with the soft gel or another glue type? I usually glue it in my book using double-sided tape or... I would use gel medium, for example, uh, 3D gel. That would be my thinking. I'm almost done with this side. I'm just going to add a bit more of the tape to hold this one in place. And then let's do similar thing on the other side. So when I include some elements on one side, I try to put them on the other. So it's going to be in a kind of a balance. I hope that makes sense because <laughs> for you, because, you know, if you have problems with building compositions or making them bigger, this is a great tip. If you put something on one side, repeat it on the other. And this way, your composition is going to naturally grow. I don't like this one. Doesn't look fun. I'm going to put you in here instead. much better and this one is too long as well oh no 
Okay, it has to stay this way. Okay, I'm going to take this huge needle I saw. Where was it? In the other box. And I'm going to make some holes and add these guys. I have a couple of them and that means I can add them as an extra detail. I would love to also add some buttons, old ones, or a safety pin. If you are wondering what kind of findings you may see on my table, well, here's some here are some examples. Okay, that's going to work. I'm going to break that long piece with the small square one, so it's not going to bother me so much. It's going to be something else. I think good spot for them is going to be here. So I use the foam and then I can put the junk elements. They work like brads. <laughs> One big and two small. There is a reason I like them, not just because they are cool electronical parts, but <laughs> they have also special meaning in Polish tradition in the 80s when people were um, kind of opposing the communist government they were putting these in their clothes like in the uh, part of the jacket and they were showing that they are resisting so that is also a very cool part of the history so in a way they are great to put in these old pages because they remind me that piece of the history Now, it's time to start painting before I'm going to add more of the metal in here, I guess. Let me have a look if there's anything else I would like to include. For good balance, I'm going to add two small ones here. So one on this side, one on the other side. Where do I find the resistors? Uh, honestly, they were in the flea market. <laughs> I found them in the flea market and they were sold in the strips like that. You know, beautiful paper together with the resistors inside. Yeah. <laughs> so I couldn't stop myself. I just got them. Um, skąd takie skarby? Ja je kupuję na targach staroci. Ludzie mają najróżniejsze rzeczy i te właśnie w takich papierkach y, ktoś miał... Często się zdarzają, bo to są już przez nikogo nie używane teraz te y, oporniczki i one tak naprawdę są najczęściej gdzieś tam po prostu ważne za śmieci. Okay, so we have them on both sides now. Uh, we can include some buttons. I like to add these guys. I also have my secret weapon here. And that is this horse horseshoe nail. Let's see if I have a straight one. Well, I have this, but I don't want to cover too much of a horse, to be honest. I feel like uh, this poor horse had enough. <laughs> be 
because of my dad anyway, so... Okay, I can add this metal part somewhere here instead, just to make my little grungy heart happy. <laughs> okay this is one of the favorite supplies i use it is just the tape from the pharmacy although i know it's hard to find it um now most of them they are um this kind of not like fabric anymore they are more synthetic so that's why it may be uh harder to find but if you do buy it it's great for adding textures and working in the journal. There are some really big, oh, really big badass paper clips here. Yeah, that would be great. Okay, so coloring and then adding more of the details. What I want to get, I want to see more of this color uh, and showing the um, textures we made with the stencils. So it would be nice if some paint would be dripping down. Although we have pretty color palette so far, so it doesn't have to be a lot. We don't have to change it completely. Zinc oxide tape. Mm. I know the crooked uh, <laughs> shoe, horseshoe nail is good. I have to find a way to attach it. It's probably going to be the best on the top. And, and I have this as well, like a piece of rusty stuff. It would be nice to add it as a nice balance to this one on the other side as well. So let's see. It's just very old measuring tape, probably. And you can't say it's measuring tape anymore because it is so rusty. But I think it's perfect. I'm going to use that here in between the layers. Hopefully it's going to stick enough. Hmm. So let's dry it a little bit so the gel is going to grab. Um, if there is anything else, the cute little tags. I can use these, yeah. I just have to make that things shorter athletic tape yeah i think it is maybe athletic tape people use it for um taping uh their muscles like their body to uh relieve the pain when they get injured or when they pull their muscles <laughs> okay i can slide these tags here one in here the other one under the photo it's going to be cute detail i do have some stickers with text as well i can add that later and i'm not sure which part of the project i would like to include it into maybe over the photo maybe somewhere here but you know it's just working on the uh, balance look how many years have you collected junk <laughs> 
I started in 2008. So... 2008, 2018, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 15, 16, 15, 16 years of collecting junk. But I don't do it like in, you know, huge amounts. I would say it's carefully curated. Um, yeah, carefully curated um, collection. And I get it from the free markets. <laughs> okay. Color. For the vintage, I usually start with some shades of brown. Quite often I use tea infusion as my paint. So that is an option. If you don't want to use tea infusion and you like that color, I can tell you to look into transparent acrylic paints. For example... Uh, from my brand, liquid acrylics are very good for this purpose. Uh, the best colors would be burnt sienna or ochre. Here's ochre, which is more like golden brown. Mm, ink black may be great for some black touches. I'm looking for burnt sienna now. But somebody was playing on my table. I can see it. <clears throat> so things got a bit misplaced. So that would be burnt sienna. It feels almost empty. And that is a bad sign because that means I need to get another bottle here. So that would give me a bit of a color to start with then. You can always use uh, watercolor pencils, you can use uh, water-soluble pastels, whatever feels uh, fun and nice to get some extra touches. Just to show you how it may look like after finishing. So here I didn't use a lot of paint, just a bit of the tea infusion. And then I was uh, adding splats, uh, like splattered white and gold paint for the extra color. So it wasn't too much. It's supposed to look dirty. It's supposed to look uh, like, you know, it's a natural thing that it got uh, stained. In my opinion, that make matches perfectly here. You can see a bit of the stain together with the red color. I had some uh, ephemera with the pink red petals so that was matching the color perfectly and i used the uh, red thread so we don't really need a lot we have a bit of this rusty color here uh, if we start with the brown this is uh, going to be like you know kind of a good start it's going to be a nice neutral Let's see if I... <laughs> yeah, it is empty. Just give me a moment. Fresh and beautiful. Uh, antique stores are usually more expensive. I would say it's better to look for more budget option when it comes to buying things like that. I usually go to the flea markets or car boot sales. This is what we have here. Um, they have all kinds of junk and there are some people who will be more on the expensive side and there will be some people who really will give you a lot of things for not a lot of money so it's good to figure out who is more of a collector and who is the person who just gets the stuff and get wants to get rid of that 
because that makes a lot of sense. Am I the only one getting advertisements all the time and it's annoying? Because I was sure I clicked, it is not supposed to go in between, but it goes and I don't like it. Let me know. I get, I get them like every 10 minutes, I think. I have to unclick it because I just dry it so it is going to grab a little bit more. Hello Lorena, good to see you. Horseshoe nails I found um, in a container with some metal junk that somebody was selling. I didn't know what they are. Yeah, you have it often and it's annoying. Have to wait until it stays skip. Okay, yeah, so apparently YouTube is not great at uh, understanding what I wanted to do. And I'm going to, uh, once we finish, I'm going to unclick it so you have no problems. Ah, that's a good advice. You could uh, go into business. <laughs> okay, so some people get the adverts, some people don't get any. This is funny. <laughs> Usually YouTube will try to push the things inside, in between, so... Yeah, Anita has access to the horseshoe nails, just saying. Okay, so now let's make a bit of like a tea stain color so we can play with that. No ads here, great. <laughs> Funny. Maybe it's with a punishment for me, you know. <laughs> I'm taking a bit of the burnt sienna color. We're going to see what kind of uh, color we're going to get. And I add water into that, so it's going to be more transparent and more like tea stain. Of course, if my sprayer is going to cooperate because it's almost empty. <laughs> You can test the color on something. Ooh, nice. Maybe even a bit more water. Now we can make some stains and see what's going to happen. And if you're afraid, you can do it with a brush and then you can take the sprayer and make it flow a little bit. And if you are afraid of using the large brush, you can use the smaller one, dip it in the water, and then you can touch the selected part and make that color flow. So that brush works really well when you want to touch the lace. So for example, here, you can touch even more. You can see the resist uh, effect on the canvas is showing the pattern better this way. Pepchu! Sorry, my dog is blind and just bumped into the tripod. <sighs> Sorry for that. So it is kind of like a safe way to 
apply a bit of extra color, a lot of water and a bit of brown, and it's going to dry a little bit lighter as well. And you can see how nicely this cotton is going to absorb the color. Let's give a bit of the color here as well. So that was the whole point of using the uh, modeling paste. You can see the pattern so nicely now. Okay, so now for good measure, Some of us have made offerings to the advertising gods. <laughs> well, that was a smart move, I guess. I added the water first to make it drip a bit more. And then look at this resist canvas effect is so cool. Let it drip. Simple and very effective, I would say. Now, the boring part, we have to dry it a little bit, but we can use that time to plan what kind of color you would like to add to your project. Now you can even put it together and make sure the color is going to overlap a little bit. Nice. Yeah, uh, one of the simple techniques you can include. And it's so, so fun to see the result like that. Now, if I would like to add more of the blue color, because we have a bits of blue here, the gray blue, I could take another paint after drying and repeat similar step. I can add some blue splatters, but also I can include some pencils, like watercolor pencils in selected parts. And that is really fun technique to use. So I will show you how it works a little bit on the top of the um, paper when the stencil goes. I need to dry it before it's going to go to the next step because the paper gets really soaked. I really think I should add some shiny detail as well. So maybe we'll try to include a little bit of the wax just as a finishing touch here and there. That would be lovely. And maybe a bit of golden paint. I have to make sure my horseshoe is not going to horseshoe nail is not going to disappear. So here we have the results so far. You can see the checked pattern of the resist canvas works really nicely. Then there's a doily here, so this doily literally needs a bit of drying. Yeah! Maybe a bit of midnight wax. I like that if there are some parts which are interactive, like you can move them around like the uh, pieces of thread here or this edge of the fabric. So 
so blue let's look for some like denim blue color i'm not sure what kind of blue i'm going to find in here let's see there's a bit of like a turquoise and bit of like a navy blue it will be smart to find the water brush and even better if there's some water in it I think I need to refill it and then we will try to include a bit of the colorful touches with the pencils and we will use the modeling paste in the stenciling um, as the part where we are going to work so it's going to give us more of the vibe so refilling these And here we go. Ah, this is really precious piece of paper with beautiful old tape. So it has to go into my special box of treasures. Mm, this pin is really cool too. <laughs> Let's see. That is a bit of a navy blue. And I just do like random color and then because it is watercolor pencil the water brush is going to activate it i think it's pretty cool and then when you go into wet it's going to make it even more intense So you can see it's going to get a bit of that color in between and it's going to also be more on the, on the freestyle side not so perfect so if you are not huge fans of perfection watercolors may be your thing like watercolor pencils and it's easy to move the things around using the brush i can transfer the color from here to some other parts. Just look at that. Let's add on this side as well. Doesn't have to be a lot. It's guys kind of funny because I would say this is navy blue, but then when I add the water brush factor, it is turning more into turquoise. It's because of the water and the brown stain, I guess. So if you want to add a bit of extra color, I really recommend pencils because it is easy to control them. You can pick up the excess. It's mostly going into the paper, so the modeling paste is going to resist. Now for the good measure, we'll add a little bit on the bottom as well. It's a good way also to highlight the details of the stenciling if you want to. So you can easily go in between the layers here. So 
So now for good measure, we need to do something on the other side. So here, these parts will be close to each other. So it may be a good idea to transfer the same color on that side. And go on the top. And you can always pick up the excess with the baby wipe if you want to. I really love what happens on the fabric, I have to say. And because we're working on the good quality scrapbooking paper, this is uh, mixed media quality paper, we can work with the wet techniques and the paper is going to last. So that is a kind of like advantage uh, because some of the delicate papers would not be too happy with all the things we are doing now, wet on wet. And that is a um, problem sometimes because you've got the paper you like to work on and you were not planning maybe to make so many wet techniques but then something changes and you change your mind and it's like oh the paper is ripping so it's a good advice i would say to remember about maybe priming your more delicate papers with the clear gesso I think this is a little bit too much. We have that nice factor included, extra blue. It looks like denim color, which I really like. So now we can dry it and decide what else we would like to add. This is a little bit too clean here. A bit more of the burnt sienna, I guess. If I added a little bit too much of the blue, now I'm toning that down with the brown again. Time for drying and some extra touches. Have you got any questions? Would you like to mention something or maybe share some words of journaling wisdom or mixed media wisdom? What would be your favorite ways to add the color to your page? I will dry it so the colors will get more subtle. I can put it on the other side and dry it from the back as well. So make sure the paper is going to be more flat. Yeah, 
just to show you, this is the power of the resist canvas. And the staining, the painting, it is just freestyle work. So you can play as much as you like. You can do more of this if you want to play with the um, water techniques. Remember, every paper is going to absorb the effect differently. So some of the papers, they're going to be very absorbing. Some other will be more resisting. So it's really fun to experiment. And that's why making multi-layered composition makes sense because then every part is going to absorb the color differently. Yeah, this feels dry. So what are your favorites way of uh, adding the color on your journal page? What are the mediums you use the most? Uh, acrylic paints, watercolor paints, sprays maybe, maybe watercolor pencils, maybe um, something else. There, mm -hmm. On my furniture, I like using really dry brush uh, and adding my paint like a uh, blush of color. Yay! That's true. That's beautiful. It adds like a shadow or adds to the flowers or molds that I put on for the same effect. Mm -hmm. In general, dry brushing is one of the best techniques if you like dimensional projects and you'd like to control the situation. So... I highly recommend dry brushing. Okay. This is what we have so far. Let's look at some possible decorating options. Still, we have these ones to add, but there was a plan to maybe include a bit of the color from something else, like waxes, because they are part of the new release. This is not usual product to use in the journal, but because it is permanent, why not? That would be very nice summery vibe and that would be delicate touch <laughs> anything and everything oh i hate dry brushing <laughs> oh. okay let's see what happens once i'm going to add a bit of the sea glass um wax so is it going to be visible well i can oh i know i can add it on the lace this is going to be nice add-on on the lace to show the edges of it for some reason, just piece of glitter here. So that sounds kind of fun. And then we can add a bit on the metal pieces. And then maybe a bit on the stenciling. It's not going to be a big difference. I'm just doing that a tiny bit. Maybe I need to get a brush and try to brush it in. Yeah, 
Yes, you did catch Finn of our life. Welcome. <laughs> Okay, this looks quite exciting in here. So for good measure, let's also do it here. I think I got excited of the result here. Oh, I pulled it too much with my brush i have to stick it ah oh, come on thank you hmm nice shiny detail let's do similar thing on the other side then glass it's only catching the light a bit hmm not a bad experiment I would say so I'm trying to pull these two together in this part <laughs> and then let's see if we can add a tiny bit of the sunny highlights it's this is honey one of the new colors so i'm just going to tap the wax To add a tiny bit of a effect. In general, waxes are not the best thing for journals because they're oily, so uh, they may stain some of the other pages, but this is going to go face to face. There would be no problem. If it was on just directly on the journal page, I would be more concerned because that could um, go on the other side of the paper and could stain the paper on the other side. But no, if we're going to put it together, there will be no problem because that is going to be stuck on the top of the other pages. Okay, so now to highlight this vibe, we used honey and sea glass, as you can see on my hand. We have a bit of metallic, quite cool. To make it even more metallic, we can add a bit of gold. And gold means sparks. I can't really find uh, Dragon's Eye to save my life, but I've got Ginger Magic Sparks, which is super shiny. So we're going to use this one. You can, yeah, you can do it, but remember when you want, if you want to add wax, yes, but remember about the possible oil a stain on the other side, right? So it has to be on the multi-layered paper and so on. It's not like really recommended technique for traditional art journaling, but in mixed media journaling, in junk journaling, you can use whatever you like. So let's work a bit on the happy splatters. I'm going to clean the photo with the baby wipe in a moment, so don't panic. Just 
just need to make sure the um, paint goes off the brush easily. So after drying, you will see mostly like the golden mica from that paint. It's not going to be super visible uh, as orange color, so don't worry about that. And it's going to correspond with our uh, honey wax that we used as an experiment. It's a bit of an addictive process, so, you know, you were warned. Now, baby wipe and cleaning the photo. How long will the page take to dry? Uh, 10 minutes when it comes to the wax. The other parts I'm going to dry with the heat gun anyway. So, another 5 minutes. So, it's cleaned up. Let's dry and think about adding last touches. I have to figure out how to attach the horseshoe nail. <laughs> Remember the waxes don't need to be dry with the heat gun. I'm now drying the paint really. The waxes, they're not going to be harmed a lot by this kind of drying. It's mostly, um, they are just going to get softer for a moment. So it's not like really a big problem when you have to um, dry something that has some wax on it. But for waxes, they work like shoe polish. They just need to be dried and that's it. There's no need to heat them up. They dry naturally and they get permanent. That's very summery page, I think. Okay, I think it is dry. I cleaned that up so you can see how shiny this paint is. Yeah, it has, the nail has to go in. I have to figure how to... Maybe I should, I could use the two resistors. Maybe I could, in fact, put it in there. Heh. Wait. <laughs> A bit of deconstruction. Come on, you can do it. This one is really not cooperating. Now. I told you. There's no need to resist. <laughs> I know they are resistors, but there's no need to resist anymore. Ha! That's quite cool. Now. A bit more of the metal touches, so the paper clip. A bit of the metal thingies. Ah, just take heavy body gel will be faster and it will stick quicker. More of the paper clips. Now 
heavy body drill just dries quickly. Oh, great. Uh, we are going to let you in as soon as we can. Thank you so much for joining the group. <laughs> Okay, let's put this one here and then for good balance, this one goes here, a bit more gel. Mm -hmm. I would need one more because it's like very shiny metal, so it would be nicer if it's three of them. Maybe here. That <sighs> was too stingy. Stay. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else? We need a text, of course, before we're going to put it in. So let's look at the possible sentiments. Well, talking about resistors, I also have this, but it's not for this project, of course. I think about the sticker pad. I had a sticker pad with sentiments here. Sentiments. We've got quite a lot and then we have Chipboard stickers from Lost in Wonderland Prima collection. If you put Jessa on the page and use the wax, will that not stop the bleeding through the next page? It will. So if you are going to use the clear gesso, it's going to stop it. Or if it's going to be the white gesso, of course, you will remove the color of the paper. But still, it is going to stop it. Very good question. Sorry, I didn't see that question. I was thinking. It, I think I'll get the thicker one because, you know, these are cheap boards. These are just a uh, sticker pad with a lot of nice text. So um, they are expressions words, but they may be a little bit delicate let's see what we have I would like to have something that is clearly visible this photo is almost black so we can look at the black ones go where you feel most alive or oh, wildly dreaming wildly dreaming sounds nice I think or believe yeah believe you're not going to fall <laughs> for sure uh, no uh, it was a trap <laughs> put puzzles back in the place brown also would work here but let's check this wildly dreaming Yeah, I feel like wildly dreaming 
would fit nicely in here and it's going to be a good balance for the photo. Let's see how sticky it is. Well, hmm. uh, let's play safe. Oh, I take heavy body gel. Let us tell you a story. Oh, well. I got... Uh, no, I don't want to rate. I want to see the chat. <sighs> Sorry, it got funny again that is crackle why do I have crackle here that's interesting let's do wildly dreaming Need a bit of a brush to remove the excess. Looks kind of okay. Now it's time to put it back in the journal. Ads. Ah. Third ad. Okay. Well. I have to figure out how to do it so it's not going to be annoying. I was sure I only clicked for this to happen before and after, but apparently they don't listen. You had eight ads. No, uh, it is not. This is what happens when you don't have much experience with YouTube and then you start experimenting. Let's pick the page where we want to put it in and then figure how to glue it in. <laughs> mm, maybe this is not matching the color that great. It's not like I always put it in the... Oh, that would be a good one. So now I can use the heavy body gel or I can stick it using double-sided tape. Which is usually the easiest way. So let's go for that solution. If I use the heavy body gel and then I take paper clips and I clip it on the sides and then in the corner so it's easier to stick and then it dries and it's ready i usually let it dry naturally overnight so we were using seven dot studio butterfly effect paper collection which is very strong paper as you can see it survived a lot of water even though there was no gesso then we were using prima resist canvas and then we were using a bit of Prima um, decoupage paper, which is more like fabric, not really paper. Here it is, right? Then 
we were using a lot of junk and then we were using a bit of the watercolor pencils and a bit of the burnt sienna liquid acrylic paint uh, for the products for stenciling we used modeling paste from art basics collection i made for prima and we used the uh, baroque sorry uh, manor house uh, stencil so that would be the big sum up of the techniques we used today oh my double back tape did not hold well I usually use the Scrapbook Adhesives brand because I got uh, I got them to try years ago and I really like the effect. So as you can see, I'm also quite heavy handed with application of that tape. So maybe this is the solution. Just use more or change the brand. I quite like the double-sided tape because it's quicker, but when the pages are very heavy, I can see why it may not work. So let's stick this one in. I like this yellow um, outline. So that will be page one. And now we put the second one. So a double spread. Wildly dreaming. Have you got any questions? And did I miss any important questions? Because, you know, we are in the stage when we are wrapping things up. I just want to remind my, pat my VIP patrons tomorrow we have... Uh, session for uh, patrons of 50 euro and more and uh, we're going to do springtime shrine so dimensional assemblage of course and those of you who love to have more of the online classes you like to support artists online you can visit my patreon and become one of my patrons on the tier of 10 euro or more you get minimum one video class per month, one live class per month, and then usually like freestyle meeting like this one as well. And that is uh, for like 10 euro per month. And uh, you can always pick other options as well because there is more of the tiers you can use for yourself. Or if you like to just pick and buy, you can go to... Finavar Art Studio website when there are video classes ready to watch. And this way you can get them in a really good price and because you can bundle them and you can um, pick the video as, with the projects that you really enjoy. So all of that is in the, uh, in the description of the video. But if you enjoy my content, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please click the like button, so the thumb up. And please follow me on social media. Because we post a lot of fun content for you. And it is great inspiration if you look for information on how to use products or how to get ideas to make various mixed media projects. Again, it is um, below the video. You can subscribe to this channel. You can give me a thumb up. You can leave a comment that helps a lot as well, makes it more visible. And then in the meantime, of course, you can check the description box and maybe find something for yourself. I can only recommend uh, classes and Patreon as a great way to learn more uh, mixed media techniques and also to be a part of the wonderful community. So I'm able to close the book easily because I have a lot of space. And here is what we did today. We played mostly with the stencil, the manor house, and with modeling paste, then adding a bit of the color from acrylic paints and pencils. 
but we also tapped a tiny bit of the waxes to make it more fun. As you can see, the tape holds that thing in place, but in case if you are worried, you can always, you know, give it a bit of a clip here and there. So it's going to stay in place better. And once you feel that it's ready to go, it is all good. You can release the clips. And this is what I do when I use the gel medium. Did you see the signatures in the book or how did you do? <laughs> I'm too lazy for this kind of stuff. I just did a very simple thing. Oh, the text. Every signature is just connected with a piece of twine. Okay? And then this signature is just glued in using fabric tape. So I didn't really use anything except three pieces of the thread. And then I just use the tape here on, you know, each signature. I added on the front and on the back, I added the white tape. This was exactly this fabric tape to be, to be honest, right? And then I just glued it this way. Very lazy, but I'm not master of the time-consuming techniques. And I just want to make my stuff efficiently. And it's a junk journal. So you're, I'm supposed to use leftovers anyway. So that was my secret technique. I think I did this video about this book... Uh, and for my patrons as well. So I'm not sure for what, which tier I was uh, making that video for, but you can check in the uh, videos and in the live streams. I think it was like a live stream and then I, I showed the finished one uh, when I was adding the top uh, part on my uh, journal. So that was kind of fun, I think. It's rather a masculine page with a bit of the denim color. I like this gold accents. It looks like pure sunshine and it goes nicely with the found objects. I really like the fact that we have real metal parts. So the piece of metal here, some clips and then the horseshoe nail and some resistors. And then we have another piece of rusty metal here and some resistors so in a way it is all in balance it is this part is the heavy one and this one is balancing one but it all works pretty nicely together it is very effective technique i have to say it is simple but if you are not master of book binding and you are making you know your journal base out of scraps this is like uh, you can use good quality washi tape as well i'm sure so it's going to do the same job if you are not sure you can uh, use also some gel medium and paper you know paper strips that's also going to work but this way you have more of the um <laughs> I would say um, reinforcement because fabric is not going to tear, right? So that's why I was thinking about using this technique. And I'm very, very happy you joined me today and you, uh, <laughs> uh, you gave me all the encouragement to make a page for you. I think it was fun. I will take the photos, of course, and post online. And just in case, stay tuned because this week... Uh, I'm going to post another mini video on uh, the YouTube channel. It's going to be a mini video showing how I used another stencil from my collection to make a simple project. So you can um, see that probably around like Tuesday, Wednesday, it's going to show up on the YouTube channel. So it's good to subscribe if you didn't do it yet, of course. 
I'm happy you enjoyed. Uh, let me say some goodbyes. Oh, my hair is really messy today. So, thank you so much for watching. This is really a fun collection of simple techniques, but you can use this idea in any color, color you like. You can just use the brown as a first vintage color that goes with the old papers. And then, of course, um, any other color you're going to add, it's going to work, right? Because with the neutral brown, any other color is going to work nicely. We were experimenting and we added a bit of the shiny effect. So we have also a wax, except um, well, not just the watercolor pencil, but also the wax. But you can use acrylic paints, you can use metallic paints. The key is to um, really use small portions of the paint when you start, water it down so it's going to uh, drip nicely or the paper will absorb it. I highly recommend playing with the fabrics of different kinds because they give you wonderful results, especially if you like stitching. If you like to stitch things together, if you like to use your sewing machine, including papers and fabric together on the journal page, it's really a lot of fun. So thank you so much for watching and being here with me. And uh, <laughs> I've got this uh, really, um, really good time and I have to clean my hands. Yeah, I know I have beautiful earrings. So uh, that is um, that is really fun thing to do. If you enjoyed, if you had good time, share this video with your friends. It is open for everybody to watch. It would be great if they can get inspired as well. Maybe they will start uh, journaling ads and so on and so on. Tomorrow, patrons of what level? Uh, tomorrow VIP, so 50 and 100, the highest tier, the exclusive video. Um, and um, I'm going, to, I, I just got the confirmation, I got the flyer, so I'm going to post that um, on patrons page in about like one hour, so you're going to get con uh, a notification. If it's going for your tier, you're going to see it as open. If it's not your tier, it's going to look like closed post. So you, this is this is the way you will know. We are. I already posted mini video explaining what we are going to do, so you can check. And um, then tomorrow, patrons of uh, art buddies and VIPs. Okay. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned. Subscribe to the channel to see more of the uh, live streams and more of the. <laughs> videos coming and um, I hope uh, you are going to come back and bring friends with you because they need to see this live stream as well bye <laughs> oh, I can't finish that here <laughs>